triple header, first triple header of the season on CBS. Let's discuss mm-hmm. all three games, but let's do it in the order that they were played, starting with what happened in Bloomington. Final score, Kansas 75, Indiana 71. The Blue Blood Hoosiers led the Jayhawks by as many as 13 points in the second half. Seemed on the verge of a nice win that could have maybe got them in the top 110 of the net. But Kansas outscored Indiana 38-21 in the final 15 minutes to win the game by four. And I hope folks who listen to Friday's podcast um, were really listening closely because what did we tell them, dead leg? We said you can't give a Blue Blood program six points at home regardless of it. the circumstances. Can't do it. Can't, can't do, do it. it. Even a Blue Blood program that ain't finished top 25 at Ken Palm since 2016 can't give them six points at home. Easy it. win. Easy win. Why did the odds makers make it so easy for us, dead leg? <laughs> okay. 75-71, Kansas wins. Uh, I don't know. Six points. We saw it the whole way coming there. Uh, although we did have some, we had some scouters. We had some scouters and deptics. <laughs> we had some doubters and skeptics going to that. But we knew it the whole way. Uh, KU did not take its first lead in this game, by the way, until 450 was remaining. That was like four minutes after Kevin McCullough Jr. picked up his fourth foul with eight and a half and change to go. When that happened, I thought, Indiana should have this. And to be clear, Indiana had this game. It had it on multiple occasions, multiple opportunities, hanging around alligator blood. They let Kansas hang around, hang around. Do not let a Bill Self coach team hang around on you, or you could be on the wrong end of an outcome. And that's exactly what happened to Indiana. Uh, Trey Galloway had uh, he's he had probably the best performance that's going to be it won't be forgotten among you know. Indiana fans, but in the aftermath of such a loaded weekend, man, guy went for 28, had so many huge buckets, shot so well from the field. He did wind up following out down the stretch there. It wasn't just him, like Mackenzie and Baco. Let me just, you know, put some shine here on Indiana fans. Uh, so, you know, not every single one of them gives us a one star review. If you wouldn't mind, GP, I'll give a little love to the Hoosiers here. And Baco, he is, he is providing, in my opinion, uh, the the progressive steps in his game that that staff knew that they would get, but it was going to take a little bit of time. I think there's there's plenty of good there. Uh, Kalel Ware is just, you need him to be the dude in games like this. And unfortunately, he was 3 of 12 from the field. He had 15 boards. But if you watch the game, like it would have been Mbako, Galloway that were stepping up. Uh, Renew had a couple of spots there. They didn't have what they needed down the stretch. And I wanted to see Kalel Ware really step up and help try and take the, over that game. Galloway said, no, this game is mine. Um, for Kansas, it was just, it was steady, steady, steady. And this is, they continue to do this without having a lot of help from the bench. In fact, in this game period, there was nine total bench points. Kansas had six, Indiana had three. Dickinson went for 17. He had a, I mean, he's got that like tiny drop step baby hook that is almost automatic. Uh, he is going to be good on a nightly basis to get you six or eight points from that alone. Harris uh, playing the point had a good, had a couple of good moments as well as there as well. And then McCuller, who hit like so many foul shots that really like compounded to help Kansas get this game. Um, it was a really nice effort overall. Uh, Indiana misses out on just a huge resume opportunity here. Um, they're going to have more, but you had Kansas number two team in the country in your building and you were you were leading this team by 13 at one point. It was up to 50 to 37 in this game and you let it you let it slip away. Um, even in spite of that, they shot well for themselves. Indiana, they took 16 threes. They made six of them. That's actually a decent clip for them. Uh, too many turnovers. Uh, it's not surprising when Kansas wins and goes on the building, uh, goes into someone else's building and does it. So there's no major headline there. Just by nature of the win, they're going to be in position to potentially be number one on Monday. To me, it was about the opportunity loss for Indiana. We'll see how they handle this moving forward. And if it is something that they can really put behind them, or if we don't look back and say, damn, they had it. And uh, and their season's can, been kind of curling sideways since. I don't know if that'll happen or not. I do know if Ware had played a little bit better, Indiana wins the game. It didn't. Four-point loss. KU took it in the end. I, I watched the game in the press room, media room at State Farm Arena. The whole time, I'm just like you. I thought it was just one of those days. You see this all the time in college basketball, and it becomes clear quickly. Like, you're just losing this game. Yeah, the better it team. felt it. It, it felt, felt it that for- way. It, 35 minutes, it felt yes. like Indiana was winning the game. It yeah. felt like, man, I'm looking at it. I've seen this a million times. I know which team is better, but I know which team's winning today. Seen it a million times. And that's what that felt like the entire game. And I guess the biggest uh, kryptonite to that feeling is Bill Self. Because he can let you feel that way. I bet Hubert Davis felt that way a few years ago in a national championship game. 
right? He's he like you the biggest kryptonite to that recipe of oh man, the home team underdog is about to win this game is Bill Self because he'll just snatch it from you. And that's what he did here. I thought the Juan Harris was great in the final minutes. Um, he he scored with 416 left, gave Kansas a lead. They never trailed after that. He had four points, two assists in the final 416. He just looked like he was in control of okay, like part of Kansas taking that in the final minutes was Dewan Harris being in charge of that in in the final few minutes. Um, so Kansas is now 10 and one that lone loss to Marquette. They've beaten Tennessee, Kentucky, Yukon, Indiana. They're going to close their non-league schedule. They got games against Yale, Wichita State. So Kansas should be 12 and one heading into the Big 12 portion of their schedule. And Indiana is now seven and three. They have zero wins over top 40 Kempom teams, but nothing but losses to like top 20 Kempom teams. Beat Michigan, beat Maryland, lost to UConn, Auburn, Kansas. Um, as of two hours ago, I haven't updated it, but as of two hours ago, they were 76 at Kempom. And when you remove the preseason data, at Bart Torvik, they were 93rd. This is year three for Mike Woodson. It's not going brilliantly. We never, I'm not setting up some joke, I promise. We never talk seriously, or at least we rarely talk seriously about Indiana. Um, so let's do that now. Um, mm -hmm. Consider this at least temporarily like a no jokes zone. Mike Woodson is in year three. He went 21 and 19 in the Big Ten in his first two years, made the NCAA tournament both seasons. That's good but only made it past the round of 64 once. Failed to make the Sweet 16 in either year, even though IU was a four seed last season. How do, like, seriously, how is the Mike Woodson thing going from your perspective, and where do you think it goes from here? I think it's going okay. It's not poor by no means. And I, you know, even in, in light of this kind of result, which, you know, you went to Kansas this, a year ago, you were obviously not competitive in that game. And now you come back and you have them again. You have them in your building. You have them on the. If you get a win like this, boy, it does on a certain level. It 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 enables the fan base and the program to say, okay, just got a win over KU. We're eight and two instead of seven and three. Was it, we were able to bounce back because remember they're coming off a, a game a, a week ago where they got just uh, you know drop kicked by Auburn. Um, but you don't have that yet. Uh, the Big Ten is going to be ripe for Indiana if it is a team of, of real legitimacy to, to make some noise because Indiana is not going to play a relevant game here uh, for a few weeks at minimum. So we'll, we'll have to look up and pop our heads out of the water and see where they're at. It's going okay um, from everything you want to include. Fan engagement, wins and losses, qualifying for the NCAA tournament, uh, how they've done in the portal, how they're doing in recruiting. Uh, it could certainly be worse. Um, I think Indiana fans might be caught in a little bit of, and I'm not going to speak on behalf of the fan base, but having heard I some would. feedback here and there, please, I'm begging you don't. I would like to. Um, they are probably caught in this weird thing where um, I don't know how many are rooting for the likes of a Dusty May to take that job whenever it comes open, but FAU got a win today to help, you know, help its resume little by little. They beat St. Bonaventure, and uh, it's very uh, possible to see how Dusty May, after not taking a job last season, if a good one opens, and there could be multiple with that, where he is a top target, um, that he chooses to take it. And if you're Indiana and Mike Woodson's guiding your program and you're a fan of that of that, uh, of that that team, um, are you wanting to stay on this course with Woody for another two, three, four years? It might work out well for you. I'm not saying it won't, but I think they're caught in this. In Sometimes college fan bases get caught in this where like, they know what they've got. They don't hate it, but they might not... like. How many Indiana fans think that they've got a final four in the future if Mike Woodson's guiding the program? I think that's a fair question to ask because, frankly, they're aching to get back to that kind of level there. And uh, I don't know. I'm kind of, you know, I'm using aloud. I know you're going to ask me the question, GP, but I, I would, if you didn't ask me to grade them, but I would say the Mike Woodson thing so far feels like a B minus, which is far from a failing grade, but they're not, they're not thriving. And that, that's for sure. And, uh, it would be a lot different had they been able to pull this one out, in my opinion. Yeah, I, I thought year one was fine. I thought, I like, again, all jokes aside, like, I'll get back to doing it when I when it's time to do it. But for now, I'm being serious. I thought year was fine. Year one was fine. I thought year two was a slight disappointment, um, you know, to be picked by a lot of people to win the Big Ten and and not even – I know they finished high in the standings, but they finished far from the top. High in the standings, but, like, there was a gap between – the Big Ten record of Purdue and their Big Ten record. So they didn't really sniff the Big Ten title. And then this season, we'll see where it's going, but the computer numbers are not good where they should be. And for what it's worth, Kim Palm has Indiana going 9-11 and 11 in the Big Ten and entering the Big Ten tournament at 17-14. and 14. That won't be good enough. 
And so then the question becomes, and I don't even know if this is a real question. This is just me and you talking. But, okay, Louisville opens, and they're going to target Dusty May. And you're Indiana, and you say, and, and Dusty's agent tells you, you could have him now, but if not, he's going to go to Louisville. But you could have him now. Does that influence you? Yeah, I mean, that's a... <laughs> That that stuff happens it's, all the does. time. It does. It does. And it's it feels like it like hey, you know, if you fire your yeah. coach and open your job, right. we'll take your job. Otherwise, right. we're going here. That happens. Or if, or if you're Louisville, you try I'm not saying that Louisville would hire Dusty May. I'm not saying he would get the top of the list. But if it happened like that, um, it does get reversed on you where Indiana passes, he takes the Louisville job and then it opens in two years, and then, and then Indiana's got the got the car. I don't know how it will play out, but um we'll see. If, if, I'll 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 put a bow on it like this. I, I, and I, and I tweeted this early on Saturday. And part of this is because CBS does college basketball on television better than anyone. Uh, the fact that you had, we had a, a lot of great matchups today, but only a couple that were road on campus environments. And just to see Ca highly rate Kansas and an Indiana team that was ready to go, ready to play in a fan base that was there. The students were on break. It did not matter. They had the stripe out there that looked great. And I love seeing Indiana engage and involved in like really in a competitive game there. They couldn't pull it out in the end, but at least it's at a, it's at a state right now where there's still like genuine enthusiasm behind the program, even if they're not ranked in the top 25 on a weekly basis and they're still trying to get there. Um, I still think there's, there's room for optimism under Woodson.